Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. In this video, we will talk about Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis Trilogy, aka the Lilith's Brew Trilogy. Now for some reason, YouTube has decided that my last video on this series was not suitable for advertisers. This means that the video has been deranked and will no longer be recommended on YouTube. You can help out by going to that video and clicking the like button or sharing it to social media. The Xenogenesis Trilogy is extremely thought-provoking. It's extremely strange, but also grounded in real-world ideas. It's deep and thoughtful, but also an absolute page-turner. Keep in mind that this video will get into some spoilers for the series, so if you haven't read the series, maybe don't watch this. Now in this series, the last remnants of humanity are saved by a race of alien beings after the Earth is left uninhabitable after a nuclear war. The first book in the series, Dawn, follows the last humans as they awaken aboard the Owen Kali vessel and prepare to return to the repaired Earth. The second book in the series, Adulthood Rites, continues the story as humanity and Owen Kali attempt to coexist together on a changed Earth that resembles the one from before, but has key differences in some plant and animal life. On Earth, humans live in various colonies. Some accept the presence of the Owen Kali, many do not. By the opening of Adulthood Rites, about 30 years have passed since the end of dawn. Earth is home to humans, Owen Kali, and Owen Kali constructs, the next generation of both species. Constructs were either born to a human mother or an Owen Kali mother. Owen Kali born would appear more as the aliens themselves do and gradually become more human. Human born would first appear more human and gradually become more Owen Kali. At some point in their lives, these child constructs would reach metamorphosis and meet each other somewhere in the middle, whether they are human born or Owen Kali born. The second book in the series shifts focus to the Owen Kali construct, Akin, the son of Lilith, the main protagonist of the first novel. His human father had been a man named Joseph. Akin also had two biological Owen Kali parents. Akin looks more human than most human born constructs, however. Full Owen Kali were covered in sensory tentacles, which constantly moved as they responded to the stimuli of their environment. Individual Owen Kali had tentacle placement on varying parts of their bodies. They had no eyes and no ears. If they wanted to, they could retract their sensory tentacles so close to their bodies that they appear almost smooth, with lumps where tentacles should be. Owen Kali constructs had mixtures of varying degrees of human and Owen Kali features. The humans saved from Earth after humanity's war were all still physically young due to the extension of their lifespans, but they had been stripped of their ability to reproduce on their own. The only children being born on Earth were Owen Kali constructs, constructed by the Uloi, the species' third sex. Many humans on Earth were resentful of the fact that they had been denied the right to have fully human children. The ability for humans to be intimate with each other was something else that was stripped away. After humans had made it through an uloi, they became repulsed by normal human-to-human -human contact. It had been painfully hard for him when he discovered that his entry into the family meant he could not touch Lilith. This was something Akin did not understand. Human beings liked to touch one another. They needed to. But once they made it through an uloi, they could not mate with each other in the human way could not even stroke and handle one another in the human way. Akin did not understand why they needed this, but he knew they did, knew it frustrated and embittered them when they could not. The children of humanity and the Owen Kali would live long lives. They would be resistant to disease and poison. They would possess elevated intelligence. They also wouldn't be anything that humans living today would consider actually human. This was the price of the continued survival of humanity. This was the cost of evolution. But the price goes further than a change in the appearance and the genetics of humans. The Earth itself would be changed. The Owen Kali had already destroyed most of the leftover ruins of Earth, intending to encourage humans to look to the future rather than the past. As the books go on, it becomes clear why this was the case. The Owen Kali didn't want humanity to continue to hold on to a dream of something that would never again be. In truth, the humans have every reason to mistrust and dislike the Owen Kali. 
The Owen Kali were not malicious, but they also never considered humanity's own agency. The Owen Kali also continued to conceal extremely important information from humanity. Humans are under the impression that one day the Owen Kali will leave Earth, that one day they might have a chance to regain independence if they can find a way to reproduce. But in reality, this was not possible. The Earth would not survive the events to come. When the Owen Kali finally did depart from the Earth, they would leave nothing behind. How would she have reacted if he told her all he knew? That it was not only the descendants of humans and Owen Kali who would eventually travel through space in newly mature ships, it was also much of the substance of the Earth. And what was left behind would be less than the corpse of a world. It would be small, cold, and as lifeless as the moon. Maturing Shakishak left nothing useful behind. They had to be worlds in themselves for as long as it took the constructs in each one to mature as a species and find another partner species to trade with. The salvaged world would finally die, yet in another way it would live on as single-celled animals lived on after dividing. Owenkali's spaceships were called Shakishak. The ships were living and somewhat conscious. Males were smaller. The human survivors in the first novel, Dawn, had been kept on a Shakishak. It was not clear how many of these the Owenkali had. There were maturing Shakishak on Earth. It was they who would eventually absorb the resources of the Earth and become the foundation of the interconnected living community of Owenkali constructs. Even if humanity was still able to continue, the Earth would no longer be able to sustain life after the Owenkali left it. This fact was concealed from most humans, likely because of the despair that it would have instilled in them if this fact was widely known. Akeen at some point considers telling this fact to Tate, the first human awakened for the mission to Earth by Lilith in the first book Dawn, but he doesn't go through with it because he realizes that if she handled the information poorly, things could go really bad for him. Akeen sympathizes with the humans, for he is both human and Owen Kali himself. He believes that the humans need their own version of the Owen Kali Akjai. The Akjai are the Owen Kali who remain in space. They will not change. They would not merge with the humans. If the merge between humans and Owen Kali should fail, the Akjai would continue. Humans didn't have this option. Akeen saw this as wrong. The Owen Kali did not agree, but they accepted this. I want to make a place for them, he said. I know what will happen to Earth, but there are other worlds. We could change the second one, or the fourth one. Make one of them more like Earth. A few of us could do it. I've heard that there is nothing living on either world. The Owen Kali would not give humans who chose to live on Mars machines. They would have to build any machine they wanted themselves. Those who chose to go would be altered so that they could once again give birth to fully human children on their own with no help from the Uloi. To the Owen Kali, what Akeen was doing in facilitating the terraforming of Mars was a terrible thing. They are sure that the humans will eventually destroy themselves. They accepted it, but they would not go out of their way to help. To them, it was akin to killing them. Why didn't the Owen Kali cause this? Why didn't they offer us Mars years ago? They would never offer you Mars. I offer you Mars. Why? Because I'm part of you. Some might view the situation which takes place at the end of adulthood rights as the humans on Mars choosing stagnation over progress. I can see how some would view it this way, but I think this is at odds with how the character Akeen sees the situation. This isn't about shying away from progress, but about not wanting to trade agency and fundamental selfhood for comfort, safety, or pleasure. Yes, the Owen Kali had helped the human race, but something was inarguably taken from them as well. This was the cost of evolution, and it was a price too high for some. If you have not read the Xenogenesis Trilogy by Octavia Butler, I highly recommend you do. Octavia Butler is one of the most captivating science fiction authors. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas.